So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to mitigate risk while you're buying a multi-million dollar business. And let's face it, this is this endeavor or this business venture has several risks and several levels of risk. So we're going to look at that and we're going to also talk about how to mitigate the risk so that you can feel a little bit comfortable while you're taking action. And this is something that I faced early on when I started to execute the model. I did not understand the types of risks that I would be uh, facing. And when there is uncertainty, there is fear. And when there is fear, your performance is blocked and you're not able to move forward and take action on the steps because everything kind of feels like um, risky and uncertain. So I was sitting at my chairman's house, who is a former CEO of a $3.5 billion company. And he had a very high pressure role in his company. And he said that Prithvi, even if a little bit, little bit of the interface of um, the software went off, in the application, you know, it was a telecom company, you know, SIM card company, which has an app. He says, even if there's a slight change in that, there would be complete chaos in the, in the city. And uh, I had a very high, high stakes uh, role and the entity was owned by the government. So I would get a call from the highest rank ranking member of the royal family, like, what the hell are you doing, you know? Uh, what's going on and so there cannot be any break in the system uh, and there were many many areas where things can go wrong when you have such a mass of people that are consumers of your product and uh, so i asked him you know how did you mitigate these uh, crazy risks and how did you deal with this crazy situation and high pressure role and he said that you know we came together one day and we got into a room and we said, you know, let's write down all the risks that can happen. Everything that can go wrong, let's just write everything down, create a document and also write down protocols. What are we going to do if these things go wrong and how we can fix it so that you can anticipate what can go wrong early on and you can then be prepared to take corrective measures. And you can actually avoid most of the risks if you identify them properly. Some of the risks that you cannot avoid, you know, living is risky. So uh, some of the risks you cannot avoid, but those risks you can mitigate and you can set up systems that can deal with that risk. And uh, so, there, so once he said that and I was like, okay, it's, it's not that you just keep tolerating the risk that is there and acting despite that but you actually identify it and you make sure that that scenario does not happen and you put mechanisms and you take measures even if things go wrong what will happen and how are you going to resolve it and what are the mechanisms in place for you to resolve it so there are some risks that you avoid and and you don't go to those places and and then there are some risks that you mitigate and you put mechanisms in place to overcome. So I'm going to talk about several levels of risk. These exist in any business venture, especially the one that we are talking about, which is about buying multi-million dollar businesses. So let's look at it. So number one risk is going to be at the top level is going to be risks around your industry and your region. You know, every region has different laws. Every um, every industry has different trends. And industries itself have risks associated to them. For example, oil and gas has a risk where the price of oil changes very dramatically when the econ economy is affected. Or if there is a geopolitical conflict, like a war, suddenly there's going to be a crazy... Um, imbalance in the oil price and that would affect the cash flow position that would affect their margins and that would affect everything else not only that oil and gas 
uh, industry operates on a very thin margin. Why do they operate on a thin margin? Because there is a big infrastructure. There is oil uh, technology that you use to extract oil from the ground and the land and the employees. And it's a very infrastructure heavy type of business. Same thing with construction. So there are certain industries which have small margins and uh, they tend to be volatile and they are the first ones to get wiped out. You should avoid those industries entirely and you would not face the risks that are associated with those industries. For example, airlines is another high infrastructure industry where there are planes. Again, it's dependent on oil. So oil is an important aspect in the airline industry and the change in oil price will affect the whole industry. And aircrafts are very heavy duty to maintain. The staff is very high quality uh, and engineers are very high, highly paid who are working at, the, at these facilities. So, and the ticket price, you can only charge so much because there's so much competition, right? And people should need, have the need, should be able to afford the air ticket. So there are too many factors involved and which is why it makes it very risky, uh, the airline business. And when I talk about the airline business and industry, I'm talking about risk on all levels. If the business suffers, there is not going to be jobs and the owner suffers, the employee suffers, everybody suffers. So the first level of risk is always around the industry and the region that you are a part of. You know, look at Ukraine or Israel, for example, right now, unfortunately, the conflict that's happening, those are high risk areas. So if you live in any of those countries and if you live, if you want to go into an industry which has, which is highly risky, I would advise against it. You know, there is a lot of advice around there that you should follow your passion and you should do what you're passionate about. And a lot of the people are passionate about flying. So they they think that going into an airline industry is going to help them but it actually will hurt you uh, if you do that so avoid industries which are high risk again doesn't mean things have to go wrong all the time you might know people who have made a lot of money in the oil industry as well as the airlines as well as restaurants which is something you should avoid again because of thin margins uh, but you have to evaluate the risk and each industry has a risk profile. You have to think like a financier. You have to think like a banker. And when you go to a bank and I've spoken to hundreds of bankers, the first thing they asked is, ask is, why did you choose this industry? And why, uh, what is the risk profile of the industry? And there are certain industries the bank is not going to fund. It doesn't matter how good your business model is, how good the numbers are, they're just going to say, we don't touch this industry. It's risky. It's against our policy to, to lend in this industry. And they just eradicate entire industries unless it's a top monopoly who's asking for money, then it's a different scenario. But industry is one level of risk that you need to mitigate and the region in general. So we go from macro to micro and we, subs we, we keep zooming in. Another uh, level of risk is, is going to be around legal areas of the business. So business has operations, finance, accounting, and legal, right? So the legal aspect, and, and it also has reputational risk. So the legal aspects of a business can uh, be affected. For example, if the business is out of compliance or it's a healthcare business and it deals with a lot of surgeries, you know, fatal surgeries. These are not minor procedures, but major procedures like hospitals that are performing major surgeries. And there is a high death rate, for example, within that hospital, then you can experience that hospital can experience lawsuits and bad press. And um, uh, that can affect legal uh, risk. So there are legal risks in a transaction. This is not just at an operational level, but even within the deal itself, when you, when you are buying that business, even in the legal terms, you could have risks which will fall under the legal uh, body of risks. And then you've got financial risks, which is how much are you paying for the company? Is the price too high or... Um, is it too risky financially? 
you know, so far the business has been performing well, last five years it has been performing well, but is that going to continue in the next five years? What are the macroeconomic trends, macroeconomic financial trends for that business, for that particular business? What's the future? And so far last five years they'll show you the earnings, it's pretty good, but you're not buying the past, you're buying the future. So you gotta evaluate from a financial perspective, from an accounting perspective, from uh, operationally what things can go wrong. So a couple of examples around operational risks would be the key man risk, which is the business, most of the revenue is dependent on a few people. You know, one or two people is bringing most of the business and the whole business is around these one or two people. You know, these are the so-called um, superstars in the business. These are like Andrew Tate, of the business you know it's they are the one man show where who are running everything and the business is coming from because of those few key people so you gotta you gotta assess that beforehand before you enter into a deal and uh, then you've got accounting risks which is if accounting is the money that has already been made and you're looking at their income statement and assessing the opportunity are the numbers real because a lot of the people lie in their financial statements to, uh, you know, for tax reasons or they may lie for whatever reason, you know. And uh, even if they want to sell the company, they may decide to lie. So we don't want to believe anybody's words. We just want to see evidence on paper. And this is why you do due diligence, financial due diligence, where you assess these risks and you look at whether the company is feasible financially or not and the numbers are as represented. So those risks will be around accounting side. So how do you actually identify all of these risks and make sense of all of this? Another one is reputational, which um, I mentioned that if a business gets bad press, that can affect sales uh, tremendously because it can affect the confidence that the people have uh, in the business. And it could be a false allegation. It could be a temporary situation. You know, people like Johnny Depp, have received negative publicity and you know his contracts was cancelled that's a classic example of reputational risk and he didn't do anything he was proven innocent and he didn't do anything but still he was dragged into this uh, uh, issue and everything he was affected financially very severely so that would be an example of a reputational risk so how do you actually identify and mitigate and manage these risks is that you form a team of experts you form a team, a, a dream team, a, a team of experts from different backgrounds to advise you on these matters. So you will have a top legal professional who has done what you want to do. You have a top accounting expert from top international law, uh, accounting firms who have 30 years of experience. You have top financial professional who has 30 plus years of experience. Operations people, same 25, 30 years of experience. Uh, and in your industry, obviously, and you use their expertise to identify and you look at the opportunity and the business from their perspective. And then you start listing all the risks. And actually, when you go to bank for financing, they will ask you, what are the risks in the business? And what are you going to do about it as a company? You're going to acquire this million dollar business. What are you going to do uh, uh, you know, if these things go wrong? And then, you know, if you have sat down with your team members, you've identified the risks and you've mitigated them and the way you've structured the agreement with the seller um, overcomes and mitigates all the risks with various mechanisms that you have put in place that protects your position and the protects, protects the position of your company and the business that you're buying and ensures future cash flow. If you've managed all of these things with your board members, you have a solid case and you can present the case with the bank and they're going to be very interested and they're going to look at your proposal favorably. Why? Because you've done your work. And this is the reason why you have to build a team of experts around you who have experience because you may not have experience. You may not be able to identify all the risks. Some of them you may identify. Some of them I can tell you off the top of my head. But there are intricacies. There are intricacies in every single business case that is, it's better that uh, accounting expert, financial expert, legal expert and, and industry experts look at it and advise you properly 
and help you mitigate all those risks and make sure to put mechanisms to protect your position. And your position can be affected from so many different angles that you need these people and you need uh, to take their advice and you need to present the case properly uh, to them so that they can then advise you. So if you're someone who has been thinking about um, buying your first business, buying, you know, getting into a, your entrepreneurship, uh, creating wealth through acquiring multi-million dollar businesses, if you're interested in learning this business model from me and you want to be trained by me one-on-one, -on -one, these days I'm offering mentorship one-on-one, -on -one, I have a few seats left, uh, reach out to me, email me and let's have a conversation about how you can start executing. I will take you by the hand from the beginning, from the piece of paper where you craft your uh, idea, your business plan, and then how, how do you choose an industry, region, how do you find these experts who are going to advise you, how, how do you uh, structure the value proposition with them, how do you present your case, how do you address questions, because these people can ask you a lot of tough questions, how do you handle yourself, how do you dress up for meetings, where do you conduct meetings, and how do you get law, top law firms and accounting firms to represent you, and how do you um, interview banks, how do you find multi-million dollar businesses, how do you negotiate with them, how do you structure deals, how do you present the case with your uh, team of experts and board members, and how do you bring all of this together. So I, I talk about and I train you from start until the point where you're doing a deal. I get you in that position uh, from the beginning. So if you're interested in learning this, reach out to me on email, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whichever platforms you're comfortable with, and I'll talk to you soon.